For all the people saying that Deontay Wilder can't punch. <laughs> we'll tell that to Sergei Lakovic. He's lodging a formal complaint that the punches that knocked him out were illegal. <laughs> he speaks the punches were illegal. And he's lodging a formal complaint. His manager's in on it. Sir Guy's in on it. Sir. <laughs> he tried to pull a David Price there, you know what I mean? <laughs> Deontay said, well, if he likes, he can come and spar with him. You know what I mean? <laughs> Sir Guy hasn't replied yet. He can get a rematch if he wants, Sir Guy. See if it was a fluke card that tie illegal. It's up to you. It's up to you. Ashley Fear Pain. He's been at the Mayweather gym, doing his thing. He sparred with Luis Colazzo, with Floyd himself. And a lot of people are making a big deal about this, but that's all good and said and done. He's still got a fight in the ring and like, with his opponents fighting, they don't give a damn about that. They, they want to win. So it's all right overhyping that he's sparring with Floyd and he's sparring in that company, but as you can see with Mickey Bay and Jay Leon Love, you still got to be able to fight yourself, so <laughs> it is what it is. The latest ruling by the World Boxing Council, the WBC, which allows heavyweight champion Dr. Iron Fist Klitschko Vitali to avoid fighting his number one mandatory challenger, Bermain Stavern, has drawn anger from an increasingly frustrated Team Stavern. But Maine has already won not one but two WBC eliminators, the latest against Chris Ariola on April the 27th. And three different mandated purse bids have been postponed. Now the WBC have announced that the 42-year-old Vitaly Klitschko has suffered an injury to his right hand and he won't return to the ring until 2014. The WBC will not make a decision regarding his title situation until the first quarter of 2014, leaving Stavern out in the cold waiting for his much-deserved title shot. Hmm. Well, it seems that, this is me speaking now, Klitschko is being given privileges that he shouldn't get. It doesn't matter how good a champion he is, he shouldn't get these privileges. I mean, the common thing now, we have to go by today's standards. If you're going to be out of the ring for so long, surely you have to move Stiverne into the interim WBC championship position. That's what happens these days. If you're injured for that long, you can't defend your title. I mean, Andre Ward ain't got no belts due to injuries and some of the governing bodies putting conditions on his belts that he wasn't happy with, you know? So he gave them up, so you know. <laughs> so I don't see why Vitali's being given these privileges. I don't understand that, but it is what it is. If you can get away with it, then you get away with it. Speaking of SOG Andre Ward, HBO just turned down a proposed bout with Dimitri Sartizan, who I believe used to hold some kind of paper title back in the day. They turned down the bout. Deeming about not credible or attractive enough for them to do anything with. So that's not going to happen right now. So we have to ask, should Andre Ward fight Edwin Labamba Rodriguez as Carcino suggests? A fight which is high risk, low reward. How much stock are HBO willing to put into that fight? I mean, Labamba... Quite a skilled fighter, but he's the kind of fighter that only the hardcore boxing fans know. So if it's about just selling a fight, I don't know. I don't know. It's been a frustrating time for Ward, who ascended so fast up the pound-for-pound -pound rankings in such a short time, only to see the momentum take a downslide like that. I mean, the money fight with Chavez was being spoke about. Everybody rubbished that. So what does he do? What does he do? Does he take on Rodriguez? Does he take on Chavez? What does he do? What, I don't know. What, what, who they want him to fight? Klitschko? I don't know. I don't know. He's not ready to fight at light heavyweight, I don't think. I think he makes super middleweight too easy to do that. So we'll see. We'll see what's the next move for SOG. 
Dante Wilder says he'll be ready to face Vitaly Klitschko if they called him up and said the fight was on. He said he's ready. He's mentally ready. And I agree. He's ready. I didn't say he's going to win. I think he's got a great chance, but I didn't say that. But yes, he's ready. He's ready. You know, okay. You can say, all right, put him in with Chris Ariola, this guy and that guy. It's similar to the David Price thing, yeah? I mean, like, when Price had the momentum, he, you know, he should have called out Klitschko and tried to get a shot. He didn't. You know what I mean? Look, 29, is it 29 fights, 29K, oh, crazy record. You know, put him in there, the KO puncher. Let's see if he can do it or not. You know, if he comes up short, no big deal. He fought the best. Yeah, he's ready. Hell yeah, he's ready. Hell yeah, he's ready. You know? If he knocks out Ariolo or Thompson, you guys are going to say, well, Klitschko softened him up. This, that, he's old, he's 40. Ariola's out of condition. He just got beaten and dropped by Stephen. That's all you're going to say. So if, if Deontay can get the title shot, take the shot, fight with heart and spirit, you have a, just as good a chance of knocking out Vladimir Klitschko as Ross Purity, as Lamont Brewster, as Corey Sanders, in my opinion, in my opinion, and if people think I'm cheerleading, that's up to them, that's up to them, you know, I think he's got a great chance of winning it, don't get me wrong, it's a big ox, but you know, if anyone can do it with that punch power, you know what I mean, that, that, that is the reason for having punch power, because you can get away with things that other fighters can't do, so he could take a chance like that, and you, for all I know, maybe he could only beat Vlad once in 10 fights, but if he gets the one fight where he, I mean, it's, it's his day. It's his day. Go for it. Go for it, dude. Go for it. I mean, is Wilder less qualified to fight for the title than Sinya Pinata, Vladimir's last challenger, and Marius Wok? And there's a few more. I'm not going to call them out because it's going to look like I'm trying to knock Vlad's opponents. But <laughs> let's keep it real. Let's keep it real. They're making a feature film out of Meldrick Taylor's dramatic... Lost to Julio Cesar Chavez Sr. in 1990, where Meldrick Taylor was stopped with approximately two seconds or so left on the clock by Richard Steele, from what I remember. They're making a actually a big screen film out of this fight. They're going to get actors and everything. People say that fight ruined. Meldrick that he never recovered from that psychologically and physically because he was getting busted up to the body he was bloody inside the mouth and he suffered internal bleeding he was urinating blood and stuff like that he was winning the fight he just had to stay on his feet but it wasn't to be it wasn't to be all I can say is that if they are going to make this film I hope Meldrick is getting broken of some change because I know life has took an unkind turn for him in terms of his neurological condition brain damage basically he, he's injured pretty bad and his financial affairs so I hope they break him off some money if they're gonna do that and they should do Manny Pacquiao getting very desperate these days <laughs> uh, come on Floyd let's get it on let's get it on Manny nobody gives a shit about that fight it went and passed like you can say what you want about Floyd the fact is people are saying he's gonna hurt Floyd's legacy Floyd is making money, undefeated, still pound for pound the best fighter, still the man everybody is talking about. He's on the cusp of everybody's thoughts when they think boxing. So I, I, I don't agree with that. I don't agree with that. Whereas Manny, after that KO, he's off the Richter. All his fans deserted him. And you know, you still got to get past Brandon Rios. <laughs> you know what I mean? There's no certainty he's going to get past Brandon Rios. A lot of people are saying that, including Mickey Van, who's a British referee, that Darren Barker has the harder fight out of him and Nathan Cleverly, who fights Karvalov. Or, uh, no, I know I'll probably butcher that, but I I'm going to leave that there. They're saying that Darren Barker's fight against Daniel Gill is going to be much tougher to win than Nathan Cleverly's against uh, the Russian. <laughs> the, the, the Russian will do, I'll just say the Russian. And I'm not sure about that. I'm not 
that sold on Daniel Gill. You know, I'm not that sold. I've seen him fight a few times. I remember the Roman Carmazan fight. I saw a bit of um, the Tony Mundane thing. And he's okay. He's okay. He's okay. He's okay. But I'd probably say he's the weakest out of all the middleweight champions, in my opinion. That's just my opinion. And Darren Barker has a great chance. I don't care if he's in Australia. Darren Barker has a great chance of winning that fight. Yeah? Darren Barker has the skills to win that. He has the skills to win that. I don't think people realize that. Darren Barker is a good boxer. He's a very good boxer. You know? Evander Holyfield, who is visiting the UK next month, will be paying a visit to Henry Wharton's gym in York. Henry Wharton, who challenged regularly for the super middleweight title in the 90s without much success, if I, as far as I remember. He lost to Nigel Benn and Eubanks on points. and um, I can't remember where else he lost to, but you know. He's opened a gym called Henry's Gym. Keep it simple, Henry. Don't extend your brain. <laughs> Henry's Gym, you know. That's all right, so. Holyfield's visiting the gym anyway. And um, Wharton hopes that Nigel Ben will pass through. Ben has immigrated to Australia. I mean, you see, I, I was, I, I'm going to track here a bit, man. When I think... Of the characters that Nigel Benn and Chris Eubanks were back in the day. How they haven't got their own boxing program or show or something like that. I, I, I don't get it. I, I know Nigel Benn is into the is it the preaching and stuff these days. So I don't know how much um, time he can dedicate to boxing. But it's weird how that works in sport. I mean, one of the most successful athletes I mean talking about track and field was Daley Thompson he used to win the decathlon for fun and like you never see him commentating or like in the world championships what's on now you never see him on none of the programs and it's strange how that, how that works really strange Frankie Gavin defends his British and Commonwealth titles against David Barnes that could be tricky for a few rounds for Frankie. You know what I mean? It depends how much Barnes has got left in the gas tank, I suppose. But Frankie goes in as a huge favourite. Enzo Macronelli takes on takes on a Commonwealth light heavyweight champion who comes from Bakayard heritage like I and I. Oville McKenzie. Oville last November stopped Macronelli under controversial circumstances. Most people felt that the fight was stopped early, prematurely in round two. Ian John Lewis stepped in and he seemed to realize that mm, maybe I shouldn't have done that, but by the time it was too late, the fight was stopped and Oville's hand was raised in victory. Enzo wants to prove that he's not finished but Enzo has took such bad knockouts in recent years ever since David Hay clipped him back in about 2007 2008 or whenever he's just got hammered but see the thing is people only talk about the knockouts that he suffered in the last six years but I remember this journeyman Lee Swaby starched him out as well it's on YouTube if you don't believe me and that was way back when Oville has to be the tip to win that one by a stoppage again. He has to be, in my opinion. That's, that's my tip, you know. Enzo's punch resistance. He nearly lost to, um, what's the guy, the, the Traveller. Can't remember his name. He was lucky to get out of the fight without getting stopped. Can't remember his name. They beat Leon Williams. I can't remember the guy's name. Shane McPhilbin, his name was Shane McPhilbin. I think it was for the British title. Scott Quigg challenges Yoandris Solinas. For the vacant super bantamweight WBA crown. It's going to be an interesting fight. It's going to be a very interesting fight. Quig. 19 stoppages in 26 fights. Drawn one. Undefeated. The bout takes place in Manchester. It's a chief support to David Hayes blockbuster clash with Tyson Fury. And this is a big, big chance for Scott Quick. Big chance. And he has to look to make the most of home advantage, you know. 
He's young, he's strong. Salinas, I'm going to have to do a little homework on him. I have to do a little homework, so I can't really say the fight's going to go one way or the other. Right at the moment, I can't do that. I can't do that, yeah? I'll look at it, and then I'll wait up. I'll wait, I might do a prediction on that one. That's a hot clash. It's a hot clash. It's a hot clash. Freddie Roach said Floyd Mayweather is a bit washed up. They're really trying to gold Floyd into this fight. <laughs> Fatali Klitschko has revealed his plans to Jose Suleiman. That he plans to run for the presidency of the Ukraine in 2015. So, is, is, is he boxing or not? I mean, I mean, you can't really do both. I, I don't know of any active boxers who are running to be the president or prime minister of a country. I think Idi Amin, okay, I think he was the Ugandan champion, you know what I mean, and he was undefeated. <laughs> for, for the most part, uh, I I don't know about the legitimacy of all them bouts he had though. But what's Vitali doing? Is he boxing or is he politicking? We don't know. We don't know. I'm not gonna. This um, Cruz guy who's gay is getting married. I, I don't understand why he's getting headlines. I mean, if he was a heterosexual boxer with the same skills and the same resume that he has now. We wouldn't hear about the dude, so I, I, I don't really get. I'm not, and I'm gonna, I'm not gonna give that no light, you know. I'm not gonna give that no light. Okay, people are acting like gays just started yesterday. I mean, like gays have been around for a while. Why do people make a big deal about that shit? If he's a gay, he's gay. If he ain't, as long as he ain't forcing nobody to bend over or not. And I mean, they don't worry about that shit. Is Adrian Broner versus Marcus Maidana worthy of a pay per view main event? Is the question. I mean, it's a silly question. That, that see, these questions are really silly to me. It's worth it if you'll pay for it. That's all it is. People are willing to pay for it, then yes, it is. If they're not, then no. <laughs> you know <what> I, mean? <laughs> I mean, maybe people might not think that Brown has proven himself or he's worthy of that, or Marcus Maidana, right? But Maybe there's enough people who want to go there and, and see Broner get turned over. That yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. You know? Maybe some people are intrigued by the style matchup. And they think it is. I don't, I don't know. know. Pay-per-view is more a supply and demand issue than who's worthy. Surely. Tony Ballou is set to face the winner of Adonis Stevenson and Tavoris Cloud. And in my opinion, he struggles to beat either one of the two. But it'll be interesting to see how he gets along when he gets his shot. We're right about now. Peace out. Watching be surrounds, watching be surrounds, watching be surrounds.